Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're coming in for a landing on the first of three storefronts. About to knock our $100 level over on the ground. Best practices. Um, everything is sort of roughly in here in terms of form, whether it's attached or sitting around. You've seen the corbels that we got to this point. Um, again, we're going to look at where we want to add those. I am going to put this all together through here, but when we're shooting, it's going to be more over in the middle of the stage. And we had a pretty important production meeting a couple days ago with regard to our limited schedule, the numbers in the show, and the time that we have allotted for filming and we have the camera gear for and our operators. It amounts to about a half an hour to put each of the musical numbers in the show in the can, which is to be satisfied with all the footage that we got and the performances and everything. And to move on to the next. That does, that includes basically setting up that scene, lighting it, performing it to, and recording it to a level of satisfaction, and then taking it apart. And a lot of these are, again, like a, a blackboard and a desk or a couch and a chair. So in one way, um, it's easy, and in other ways, it's not. Uh, we've got three days, and it's the second day that we were going to be filming on this set. So we're going to stow our three city pieces somewhere in here covered with black um, curtain or whatever and not see them and shoot all the first day. We're shooting from 3 in the afternoon till 8 p.m. So then at the beginning of the second day, I'll be here all day setting up for a 3 p.m. call or whatever. Well, no, it's earlier than that, but 3 p.m. start. So we're going to get the, the pieces aligned anchored to the floor, set dressed, and looking beautiful and rocking to go before three that second day. Shoot three to eight, and then the following, the third day. Whoa, on the second day, we're going to actually finish with the city sit, set, these stores, in the middle of that day. So we're going to, I'm going to get it ready all um, day, second day. Start at three, shoot till maybe six, five or six. And then it's got to be taken apart over like a, a dinner hour or whatever, a break. And then they're going to get a, an hour or two shooting other things that uh, second day, and then the third day, they don't need it either. So it's just that two-thirds of the of the middle day, weirdly, that this is going to be set up and shot. I think it's going to tie the show together to have such a substantial set as, com as compared to other scenes done with these corner pieces all in blackness or, like we said, with a few pieces of furniture. But that being said, there's an awful lot of work going into these to be shooting on them for, you know, an hour and a half total and to see what amounts to probably 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes worth of footage, not even um, about 10 minutes in the final edit, which is a 70 minute um, show for the most part. So anyway, we're gonna still do our best and put in everything that we can put in. Again, we get a lot of this trim lumber for free. It's not the highest grade stuff, but boy does it add production value, I think, to something like this. So we looked before at what it was with just the openings, but just putting this like uh, PVC backer rod shape in here to indicate the sash or the, or the pane and wrapping the outside with this casement or rail, uh, simple colonial stuff here gives you all that depth in and around and it makes it feel now ignore the white and the black lines from the gaff tape and stuff it'll all be painted one color but these are going to do like we looked at before like it shows here uh alternating you know shallow sh shadow highlight shadow shadow highlight you know shadow highlight all these little lines and they also catch a dry brush so we're going to get the color on that they are and then when we're all done for the colors that are on here we're going to set some aside and add a considerable amount of white to create a highlight and we'll dry brush that we'll just come through and smear all of this with a sponge or a handful of paper towel with that color on it that's kind of dry and it'll catch the tops of all these things and it really pop that texture out and in the end it's going to make a ton it's going to have huge returns for that uh some other issues here, this doorway rolls into this opening, but its actual edges, you know, have the additive layer of bendy plywood that does this shape here, that stops here, then there's this trim, and then it's back onto the surface of the plywood box beam that they're made of. So this is where it lines up on something, you know, a vertical plane. I just tucked that all behind this piece of trim. And I kind of bit myself here too, because to go around this little window opening, I couldn't come down the far side with trim over here uh, because it crowded our door out of the opening so far that it opened up a, a gap through there, which is, undesirable. So we're just going to die into a thin three quarter inch rip here that gets painted in. In the end, there'll be so many lines and stuff happening. You won't notice that. Uh, so we just had to play a little jazz there. We call it. And our awning's been put together. That was a considerable project because not only do we want to roll right out of one and into the other smoothly, we needed it to work out in close to whole lobes or whatever you want to call this at both ends. So that has a hair taken off. I was just fortunate 
stacking up all those five gallon pails as I did on a 14 foot stretch, I needed to take off a total of a quarter of an inch overall. So I took an eighth off this end, an eighth off the other. You'll never notice that it doesn't smoothly round that corner. Because I, now you will, because I told you. But our awning hangs on there real nice, and our door functions. We've got to clean up this, this pane of window or whatever you want to call it, but you can come right in here. I'm not going to use these gussets. They're in here to just temporarily stand it up. What I think I am going to do is represent the thickness of the building like you'd have. So inside this shop, you'd have the surface of the wall here, and it'd be a concrete block or something else, pretty, you know, six, eight inches here, and it would be furred or even a full two by four wall on both sides to finish it in both shops. So it'd actually be greater in thickness than this. I'm gonna wrap this old bench in Luan to represent that wall, and then we'll start here with our next, our another, you know, another storefront, and we'll go again. But what'll be neat is we'll get the surface of what is sort of the building wall that stops short of the height of the storefront and it's just finished gray or whatever. Um, but these can be anchored right to the floor and weight thrown in there and they will serve as columns to stand these up. Um, worst case scenario, so we won't need any of this here. So there'll be a storefront, this column, another storefront, the second column as you see there and the last storefront. Uh, if I need to make two more of these quickly, wrap them in Luan and stick them at the ends in the same sort of way, I'll do that. Uh, but it'll be a clean and neat way and add enough three of three dimensions here to kind of make this even kind of interesting more so again. But the idea being we're going to see out of these shops onto the street a little bit for some of our camera angles. And maybe one of our scenes is going to take place inside rather than out on the street for this too. So it's just going to be, it's going to come together slowly as we figure out what works and you know for our shoot schedule and what doesn't work. I am going to add some detail to these corbels. I was drinking my, <laughs> I don't know what's stuff in there still, uh, my Gold Peak tea, and I was looking at the, the bottom of the can. I remember, you know, the bottom of these has changed just in my lifetime. It's just interesting to see. Everybody seems to think they need to have their own um, bottled geometry. Some of them make like a cool ray gun shape and we've made balustrade um, with having having students bring all their pop bottles in before and we'll alternate uh, one up this way and one the other way and it ends up looking like a, a turned baluster post that can be painted in. We certainly can't buy uh, lathed baluster post but we've made a balustrade using stacked up bottles before and it it looks pretty cool the more the more effort you could put into selecting the bottles and lining everything up and, and and fabricating it the better it looks but anyway the bottom of it looked like a sort of a rosette like wood sculpt good enough or an interesting sculpt i i intend to set it into all these corbels on both sides like this actually i did a test here i need to go out and buy i don't have the hole saw between two and three quarters and three, I don't have a two and seven eighths, but I need to buy one because I tried it with a three and it's too big. But I'm think I did a test here. I'm gonna drill the appropriate size and then I set up my um, colonial kind of shape in my router and I routed the edges of the opening. So that has some, some body line detail. And uh, and this, when this sits in here and gets painted, it'll all kind of come together, I think. I just want it to sit in there t more tightly. So I did a test over here. When I'm certain of what I want to do, uh, I found a place here for the circle center that was the same sort of distance from this edge, this edge, and this edge. And you know, I threw the 45 in here and I noted its measurement to the center location so that I can translate it to all of them. I'm gonna just drill all those. We'll have to kill. I've had one and we need eight, so we gotta have seven more. These were good, with green tea. Uh, it's 30 some grams of sugar. Total carbs, 38 grams. Jesus, no wonder Americans are fat. Um, maybe we'll try something from them that uh, they do have unsweetened. Um, but we'll set these all with construction adhesive. And this is another thing that we'll catch with the dry brush. These will just get painted all that same, I think it's green. And then we come back and we smear, you know, we catch all these little detail edges with uh, dry brush highlight and all that texture pops. And it's much nicer than illustrating all that. And people are from the school of, a lot of scenic people, illustrate and it's an incredibly t talented people will illustrate all that stuff so it looks good from out there and that's fine and that's what i did with those corbels you know before i didn't really do a very professional scenic job but it was essentially what they do i'm more for creating form and just letting the form uh work for the paint you know letting the paint work on the form and, and getting everything i want out of it for that reason between that and real lights casting real shadows because they're real forms so the question becomes how to make those forms cost effectively and quickly in terms of time so I'm getting better at that. I do own almost every hole saw under the sun because I end up using them more for uh, creative things than I do for like plumbing and stuff like, for, you know, fundamentally trade type things. So 
We've also covered our area of the stage that couldn't be painted black. We were given these, I want to say they're like four by three Aspenite um, panels. Some kind of byproduct or pre-existing something or other. Some, a few of them were pretty damaged. It's just, like I said, fiberboard or whatever, Aspenite. So these two weren't in the greatest shape. We're going to get a couple more, but this went down with Ramboard tape. Where's that? Where that Ramboard tape? Here it is. So we use Ramboard, which is that roll over there, as floor, which is floor protection for when you have a construction site or uh, are filming actually in a nice house or something and all the crew needs, you want to protect everything. Um, we bought their product, their tape product, which is nice because it has like a paper texture and it's very sticky and it's made to stick to dry kind of fibrous cardboard so it stuck to the aspenite really well and it stuck it down really well and ultimately we'll be able to roll this black paint and our entire floor will then be black um, but what I'm getting at is I like this because I don't think it's going to change see sometimes in some places here it completely disappears because it's near as makes no difference the same micro texture as the aspenite is and that's great because when you paint it all black I don't think you're going to get the tape lines making like witness lines and then the panel areas either. I don't think you're going to have that grid on there. Don't let me jinx it, but that's what you want. Um, a lot of times with the gaff tape, we like to fix all of our outside corners with that, but it actually bounces light a little differently. So what you end up with, you paint everything the same color, but the finish on Luon with that paint color on it and the tape, the gaff tape with that paint color on it is different because of the geometry, micro geometry of the surface of those materials. And so regardless of it being painted the same color, when light hits it, like it's hitting it here, it looks different. It stands out. So long story short, I think this, um, I think that this Ramboard tape is going to paint black along with the Aspenite and disappear, hopefully. And um, and if it does, we're going to maybe, and it's half as much for a roll. It's twice as wide. Mm, no, it's an inch wider than gaff. But a, gaff, a roll of good quality gaff tape is going to run you at least $16, $17. And these are about $10, 9 and a half, 10 so it's wider and it's uh, nearly half as much money. And in areas like this, where we finish the outside corner, uh, maybe we'll use that instead. Because as you can see, this is like a satiny, shiny texture, and it'll you'll you'll see the same color painted onto this and onto that, and they'll they'll be different. And we live with it. Um, but I think the other two set pieces, I'm going to get a couple rolls of this, and I'm going to use this tape in place of the gaff and see if I don't like it better. And it, I think it's thinner. And it's like in the gaff here, you get two layers, one on top. We went around the seam this way, and then we went over it there. You get two layers, and you get appreciable. See that? I'm being, I know I'm picking nits here, but if it's just as easy to tape with a different paper, with a more paper-based product that does not have the fabric weave in it like gaff does, which is great for a lot of reasons, but that, that weave adds thickness. And if we skip situations like that because we use the, the Ramboard tape in the future, so much the better. So... Several different things coming at us now, and we're going to pick our storefront types based on what we already own. So we've got to have a farmer's market in this show, and we can get a bunch of fake food, which is going to work well for that fake produce. But our shops, we don't want to make a bunch of work for ourselves and call it a bakery and then struggle to come up with all the bakery goods that would be in the window. So we're going to look at, I think we've got mannequins and jewelry, and uh, we may end up with a a clothing store or a boutique or something with jewelry and clothes on mannequins in the windows. And we were talking about a hotel and also a coffee shop. So actually this may be the coffee shop. I'm not sure yet. But uh, we're going to hang plants in all the windows too because we normally... Plants just add so much to a space, any space. And um, especially if you lean and you get creative with the actual type of plant. You don't just throw the same pothos in everything. Although it does work. It's a good cheat. Um, but if you pick something interesting that suits the space you can even do so much uh, more with it but we normally can't put real pl uh, plants on stage because they got to come in and go out and they've got real dirt in them and they get beaten up and so we don't own a lot of fake plants it's just been a headache every year i always want to see a lot of greenery in a lot of the sets that we compose but it's hard to do it we're not going to worry about that this year we can be careful with real plants and so i think i'm going to dress a lot of these with real plants inside and, uh, and we're going to have the fake trees out. So we selected our trees, and we're going to bring those in, but we'll look at those once they're here and talk all about that. For right now, i got to get into making two more storefronts and keeping the, you know, the space out here organized enough so that band can get in here and rehearse and some other things that have to happen um, this year that don't usually have to happen because the time of year is a little different, and COVID restrictions mean that to get the band 
group of kids together in one space. This is the only one that it'll do. We can't push them anywhere else in the building. And so we got to be respectful of the fact that they got to get in here tomorrow and not just pack it full of stuff. That's going to present a problem when I have more of these storefronts laying on the floor in construction and we've got other, you know, elements in here and the trees won't come in till probably the very last because they are obviously going to take up more room and kids can't resist touching stuff like that. And it'll probably get broken if I'm honest, but, um, that's basically where we are. So keep, keep checking in and we will hopefully pull this thing off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you.